Hi, everybody. This is your old pal, Uncle Hondo, your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer. And it's time for the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. So glad to be joined by one of my best friends, the great Matt Holatic from thespun.com. Now, Matt, I need to ask you quickly, do you have a beverage? I have one. Do you I have, have one. one? I do, yes. Okay. Here is why. This podcast is growing exponentially. In fact, we're about to break 20,000 subscribers on YouTube and our audio only. Everything is just booming. And nobody was being hateful. But one guy put out a tweet and said, hey, we're starting a drinking game. Every time Hondo uses these terms, we take a shot. Now, I'm not a drinker. My wife's blood type is mimosa. Uh -huh. And I, so I am going to try hard. So I'm going to use these terms one time and try to stay away. Instead of germane, <laughs> take a drink because I said the word. I'm going to say relevant. Instead of frugal, not cheap, I'm going to say smart and disciplined. Sounds good. Maybe I'll mix it up. I love the listeners. They're so much fun. And none of them were being mean. It no, was just no. Funny. Well, that's what makes it fun when you're building an audience like that. So but I'm going to try hard. No, I, I, one guy sent me an email saying about it. And I go, I know I'm going to try very hard to be careful. He goes, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. He goes, at least on Fridays, don't. So maybe on Fridays, I'll throw some of them in there. But when I do it, Matt, if you catch it, you got to stop me. and We got to take a drink. Okay, we're both sporting water bottles today. All right, let's get right in it. The Raiders have been smart and disciplined huh. in free agency. They have not uh, wasted money. There's still offers on the table for some players. Let's start with yesterday. We broke Alexander Madison being signed. Um, this is a guy that if you just look at stats, and we've warned people, don't do that. If you just look at stats, you say, well, 180 carries, 700 yards, no touchdown. But we all know when Kirk Cousins went down, the box was stacked. The only thing they really had was the ability to run the football, and he still was able to run for a, you know, a decent average and pick up a bunch of yards. Again, they go out and get a guy. He's not Josh Jacobs, but nobody said he was. He's a quality number two. Now, is he as good of a runner as Amir? No. Is he as good of a pass catcher as Amir Abdullah? No. But what he is, is he's a Swiss Army guy. Maybe not a master of something, but a jack of all. He's a great number two back for what they want. Uh, it fits right. Again, they were smart and disciplined. No drinking. and they get another guy. Talk about that and how they've approached this, please. Well, I think that when you are looking to build up your running back position, you want diversity in terms of skill sets and guys that can do different things, especially when you don't have that bell cow back. And they, we've talked about it on here before, they wanted Josh Jacobs back, but at their price. And when he got the offer that he got from the Packers, you know, that kind of ended things there. So now I think they're building – that room wisely they're not focusing on replacing josh jacobs singularly but they're going to try to utilize multiple guys who could do some different things and kind of make up for the loss that way zamir white and, showed they, believe, a lot and they believe zamir can be that bell cow well i was gonna say zamir white sh showed out really well in the last year he, he he showed a lot of potential i think there's a lot there i understand why they're as high in them as they are um, and now you have a guy in Alexander Madison who's been around and understands what it's like to be part of a timeshare and to be part of a, a rotation there. And I think you said he could do some different things, so they'll be able to utilize him. I think it's, you know, I think if you're if you're not going to have one of the top tier running backs, whether it's because you let them walk in free agency or you know you're you you don't. You're not going to sign one or, or you didn't draft one. I think this is the way to build up a running back. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, and now what I think Tom Telesco is doing, and I think he's doing a great job of it, 
he's positioning to the Raiders where they can take best player available. And it's not, oh my God, I've got to have a running back. I mean, that is the best place that you want to be. They're not a deep enough roster where any positions off the table for selection in the NFL draft. And so they're putting themselves in a position of, hey, every position has players, capable players. Now we get to go pick the best player available or trade back because we we have been smart and disciplined. And, and I think it's just, it's positioned them well. I have been, I, I know fans want to look over and see 15 signings. And there are some teams that have a lot of signings, but there are also those teams have a lot of guys, in my opinion, they overpaid for. They've got some guys that at the end of their career, you're kind of thinking, what are they doing? They they could have gotten, like, for example, the, the Raiders get Harrison Bryant, the tight end. He Does he have overwhelming stats? No, but he has flashes of showing you what you can get, be, same way as Alexander Madison. They've, they've shown you what they can do. Now they need opportunity. But you've gone and got them at a smart and disciplined cost that you can move on if they don't prosper, but you've given them that opportunity. To me, I just think the way Telesco's done this, I think he's had a great – and you know, I don't work for the team. And I've not been afraid to be critical of the team. But that's – my job's not to be a cheerleader – nor negative Nancy. My job is just to present facts, and the facts are Telesco's done a very jo good job being smart and disciplined and setting the Raiders up for the draft, and I still think they're not done in free agency. I think if you keep saying smart and disciplined, people will be drinking whenever you say that next. <laughs> well, but i got to change it until they I add know. that to the – pretty soon there's going to – remember that movie, um, Billy Madison? Oh, yeah. Where he calls the one guy and says, listen, I'm sorry I picked on you in high school. Forgive me. And the guy reaches over and it says, people I have to kill list. And he takes Billy's <laughs> name off. <laughs> Pretty soon our listeners are going to be watching with this whole list of terms. Getting back to the uh, the the topic at hand. Um, I, I think that what you saw from the Raiders was they had one guy that they prioritized that they were going to be willing to push the envelope and break the bank for, and that's Christian Wilkins. And they viewed him as the type of stud and, and force multiplier along that defensive line with Max Crosby and Malcolm Kuntz and Tyree Wilson and some of these other guys. And I think then what you see after that is, you know, another couple of other signings that I thought made a lot of sense, you know, bringing back Adam Butler, bringing back John Jenkins, guys like that who played well last year and have experience and, and know your culture, know your, your system, what you're looking for. Um, I think that what th their approach was, let's go all out for one guy that we think is a star and we think is going to have the biggest kind of impact on our roster. And then let's supplement that with, you know, some different signings that are, you know, can, can increase the depth. You know, obviously Gardner Minshew increases the competition at quarterback. Um, we talked about Alexander Madison, Harrison Bryant, those guys. And I think that you want to be, when you're in a, no matter what level of the NFL you're at, whether you're rebuilding or watch, let me phrase this differently. If you're rebuilding, you have so many holes that you might get almost you know, you're pigeonholed into to taking one one or two positions or, or you have to take a quarterback or something like that. If you're loaded and you're at the top of the league, you have the luxury of kind of going best player available um, and, and just supplementing your roster that way. Uh, when you're in the middle and you're building, which is like where I think the Raiders are, they're not rebuilding, they're not fully loaded. Um you want to get to the point where you feel you can go best player available, where you feel your depth is covered as much as possible. So you're not pigeonholed into, we got to go get a tackle. We got to go get a wide receiver, something like that. And I think that that was kind of the strategy that the Raiders were going for uh, this off season. I want to talk to you about the draft. Um, as you know, when I did my first mock and I get, NFL executives input on my mock. But when I did my first mock, I had the Raiders taking JJ McCarthy at their, as the, their first pick in the second round and said, 
One ex I, I had a quote from one executive. If the draft were today, this is where you would get him. But we have him as the best quarterback in the draft. And we think he's going to go much higher by the time the draft comes. Now, I put out a mock draft last week in which I had um, the Patriots taking him because that's what I was hearing from NFL executives. And then, bam, yesterday, I think it was the Boston Globe, NC, NBC Sports comes out. They have them taking them at three. Um, are, I don't. You and I are not surprised because we talk. This is what the talk was in the NFL. But J.J. McCarthy, the teams that I know who consistently draft well, told me all along they thought J.J. was not all along, but they told me after the season ended, they after the Alabama game specifically, they thought he was the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think you're surprised, but let's talk about J.J. McCarthy. Well, he's been rising the way that we kind of said we thought he would. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be stunned if the first four picks are all quarterbacks. Um, if you get Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, and if you if McCarthy goes three to the Patriots, I, I wouldn't be surprised after the trade they made last week if the Vikings maneuver a way to trade up to four to get Drake May, who's who's mm -hmm. may have slipped a, a little bit outside the top three. So you could see all four of those big big four quarterbacks, so to speak, going right off the bat in the first round. Um I think that. And listen, I'll be honest with you. When I started to – to, I'm not evaluating guys the way NFL draft people are. I don't have the access to the tapes that they have or the access to the interviews and things like that. But when I, when I started, the draft process began. I remember thinking to myself – and there are still times I think to myself, man, I, J.J. McCarthy didn't really need to or didn't show like – that it factor for much of his career at Michigan because he he really didn't have to for the most mm -hmm. part. They were better than pretty much every team they played. They were able to control games, especially running the ball. Um, but there are a lot of NFL people that believe that he will translate better to the next level than he did in college. Um, they think that his growth his best football is ahead of him. They think that, you know, with the the athleticism he has, they think he has good enough arm strength. They think that obviously he has the intangibles. He's played in a lot of big games. He's won a lot of big games. Um, so I'm not really that surprised that he's rising up draft boards. And I, I think, I really do think that he's going to be one of the top four picks. And I wouldn't be stunned if the first four picks are all quarterbacks and the draft really begins at five with, um, the, the loss with Jim Harbaugh, honest, ironically, and the, and the Chargers. Okay, so let's talk about all that for a minute because um, my wife and I recently had dinner with an NFL executive and his wife that we're very good friends with. They were kind of in the area. We were in the area, so we met somewhere and a distance for both, but close enough that we could do it. And he was talking to me. He's like, listen, all I had to do was watch him against Alabama. I watched him against four high draft pick defensive backs, pick him apart. He already goes from under center, under center. He's the most pro ready. And I mean, this guy could not quit raving about him. And to me, when, when you look at everything JJ offers, I just think he offers a lot. Now let's talk about what you just said. Let, let's assume I think there's going to be five quarterbacks selected. There could be as many as seven. I think five. I've already told you I predicted 10 offensive linemen, but I think five. Now, let me share with you. So when I did my last mock draft, I had several executives pick as if I don't, I don't ask any executive to pick for their team. Just what do you think? And it's funny because they're all like, listen, this is who I would pick. This is who I need. This is a good player. But this team's a perennial bad drafter. They're not picking this guy. I always find that to be fun and, and hilarious to me. But when you look at this draft, there's going to be some people making bad picks. It's why you see certain teams always at the top of the draft. And like everyone's told me, it pushes good players down. 
And when you push good players down, it just makes the Raiders more appealing at 13. I, I think they're going to use the pick, okay? I think the Raiders will stay at 13 and use the pick. But I'm telling you, I am more and more convinced they're going to have a lot of offers to trade out of that pick and move down into the uh, just a little bit farther, the 17 to 25 range, 17 to 25 range. I think they're going to have that chance, maybe even pick up an ad additional second round pick. This is going to be a fun draft. What are your thoughts? Well, if let's say if those first four picks are all quarterbacks the way that we were thinking they might be, now your draft starts at five. Now you push down all the offensive tackles, Shanu, Joe, all uh, Fuaga from Oregon State. Um, you push Don't down all the Fanu, Fanu at Penn State. I said Pashanu. Oh, I didn't hear you. Okay, okay. Did. I didn't hear you. Um, the, all the receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., Rome Dunze, Malik Neighbors. You pushed all those guys down. That's six guys that are viewed as potential top 10 picks, studs right there. Brock Bowers, who's a weapon, a tight end, he's pushed down. Well, not necessarily pushed down because he wasn't going to go top four, but that's another guy that could be available in that range. And you haven't even gotten to people on the defensive side of the ball that are, are potential top you know, 15 picks. So the more teams take quarterbacks, the more quarterbacks go early, the more it pushes – really good players at other positions down. And I think that that will be fascinating uh, to see because if you're, you know, if you're the Chargers, uh, do you stay at five and take, you know, the best receiver available? If you're the Giants, do you stay at six and take the best receiver available? They both need receivers. Um, or do you say, well, we're not getting, the Chargers don't need a quarterback, but the Giants wouldn't get one. Do we trade down? Do we try to get more assets? Um, you know, the same thing goes with uh, and I'm looking at another New York team, the Jets at 10. The Jets came into the offseason with a big, massive need on offensive line. Well, they still could take an offensive lineman at 10, but they don't have the, <clears throat> the need for it as much after a free agency and, and trading for Morgan Moses. Um, so it, it'll be fascinating. I think if those four quarterbacks go, that you're going to see teams – in the bottom half of the top 10 or just outside of it, like the Raiders start to feel like they're in the sweet spot there. And that's when more things open up, more options open up. Well, and that's when you'll see good teams who are good drafting teams, you know, sitting there in the low twenties. When I say low twenties, I'm talking 26 to 32 saying, okay, we don't normally get to pick high, but now there's a guy that we have in our top three or four that's dropped down near 13. Let's try to make a trade with the Raiders. And, you know, we'll throw them our bottom of the first round and our second round to get up there because we normally don't pick. And still, that's pretty cost effective. I think it's going to be a fascinating draft. All right. I want to get to another point. So talking about the Bolt, um, when Jim Harbaugh got into coaching, he tells this story about Bo Schembecker saying, Jimmy, are you going to use a tight end? Jim loves tight ends. Now, I have it. I've had it said so many times. Hondo hates Jim Harbaugh when I said I didn't think he should be the Raider coach. No, I just thought Antonio Pierce had earned it. And I don't hate Jimmy at all. I like him a lot. Covered him a lot. Great coach. I have been told by multiple people he probably should go offensive line wide receiver, but tight end in his offense is so important. And Bowers is a blocker and a catcher. I've been told by multiple people, I just can't see Jim Harbaugh going by an elite tight end. There may not be another tight end as good as him for a few years. They can't see him going by Bowers. Your thoughts? That would be something because now you have the top five picks. You could you're talking about a scenario maybe where the top five picks are quarterbacks and a tight end, and now the, every at sitting there from six on, you have all the receivers, all the offensive tackles. It could be that would That's be one of the one of the that would be one of the most excuse me one of the most interesting starts to an NFL draft that I could remember. Uh, all right, thinking about so. Let's talk about Marvin Harrison and neighbors. 
It has been universally accepted. If if Harrison would have come out last year, he was the number one wide receiver in the draft. Neighbors really had a great year. He matured. He worked on stuff bigger, faster, stronger this year. I have heard multiple teams tell me Harrison's one. But neighbors is 1B. I mean, they they said it is a rice paper difference between those two. And I know a couple of teams that I think would take neighbors over Harrison. <clears throat> a couple of teams, um, Tennessee, maybe some others that I'm hearing who would take neighbors. Are you intrigued at watching this grow? Because, I mean, we all know how good Harrison is. It isn't like Harrison slipping. No, it's just neighbors is exploding. No, and it's funny. It's one of those things where everybody that the, people knew Willie Neighbors was really good after the 2022 season, but Marvin Harrison Jr.'s stock was sky high after 2022 because, like you said, people were saying, "Too bad he can't come out now. He'd be the first wide receiver taken." And I feel like the longer you are regarded as the top guy. The more people might become a little bit intrigued or fascinated by the up and coming people behind you, and I can see why. I mean, I, there was somebody I can't remember who it was, uh, draft analyst that I read on on Twitter or X, whatever they're calling it, say, "Listen, I think that Harrison is still wide receiver one, probably still the first wide receiver taken." But I can definitely see teams having Malik Neighbors ahead of him. And you can – there's no – it's not a crazy thing to if a team takes Malik Neighbors first before Marvin Harrison Jr. It's not like it's, you know, a shocking, massive mistake on paper. So – You know, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it'll be interesting. And I know Roma, uh, Roma Dunze is, is, is working his way in there too. You know what's funny – is as you know, because you and I have done this for so many years, I always hear from my NFL guy who are the dudes. And there are a few of them this year. But I've I thought that was humorous that you know, listening to their dude list and just kind of how this draft is falling out. All right, let's talk about the Raiders. Um, they did a lot, they were smart and disciplined. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I forgot the other. I know what the other word was. I don't remember. Uh, Jermaine. Huh? Jermaine. Jermaine. No, no, yeah. no. I know the word. I'm trying to remember what I said I was going to. Uh, you just said it. We got to take a shot. But relevant. I'm trying to remember. Relevant. Oh, re relevant. 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 <laughs> All right. So it's very fascinating to me. So they kicked the tires on a lot of trades. They looked at a lot of guys. Is this guy available? That guy available? There's one particular superstar um, that I know that they've looked at. And, and actually, it's one particular position, a couple of superstars there. Um, I still don't think that those deals are dead. I don't, I'm not predicting anything is imminent or they're going to happen. I just know that they're looking. And um, a, a big move there would be a huge deal for the Raiders and just how the draft's coming. But when you look at how this draft is setting up, to me, this is going to be one of the most exciting drafts, um, in my opinion, in my lifetime. Uh, I was told, and let me get the notes because I want to be specific. I was told by an NFL executive last night, I texted him because I knew what we were going to be talking about. This was my question how deep is this draft? And this is what he told me. There's going to be first round talent that's going to slip well into the mid second round. I thought that was big. I asked him, is there one position that you think is deep, but deep more in the middle and not at the top? This is what he said. We have no running backs with a first round grade. There are a lot of them with low second round and third, who will be good backs who could develop into something special, but we don't have any running backs with a first round grade. I thought that was interesting. Your thoughts on that? I, I we talked last week a little bit, I believe, if I remember correctly, about um, 
some positions that weren't necessarily as, as deep linebacker. as others. Linebacker, tight end. Bowers is the, the stud, but after him, it's kind of there's a there's a dropping off point. Um, you know, you're seeing running backs, I think, in general get taken less and less early in the draft. But even in spite of that, um, or in addition to that, I should say, this year's class is not viewed as an overwhelmingly great running back class. It doesn't have, you know, those guys, you know, that we've had. It doesn't have a Josh Jacobs or a Saquon Barkley or, or you know, someone like that in it. Um, so I think you'll see – Safety is another position, too, where you could see some guys get pushed down. Um, I think that we said we said linebacker. I think it's really deep on the defensive and offensive lines. So there's a lot of talent out there with that. Um, and I think that it's it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a very fun draft to watch because I think especially if we see a mad rush of quarterbacks early on, people will get pushed down and you might see some maneuvering for uh, some players that are not necessarily slipping, but not necessarily because of anything they did just because of the way the draft board fell. All right. Let's talk about sincere McCormick. This is a guy who the Raiders sign. He showed some flashes, but not able to get on the field. This is a guy that I know that they want to see do something, but this is where the NFL is so different. You got to earn your lunch. You got to make yourself relevant. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to do those things. This is a guy that I think could be a sleeping giant, but it's up to him to become that. Um, that's the thing I love about the NFL. No participation trophies. What you kill, you eat. And and there's a, an old saying in Michigan where I'm from, what do you call a skinny man? Bad hunter or <laughs> bad fisherman. I just think those are some guys. Cole Fotheringham is a guy that showed a lot. A lot of people thought he should have been on the roster last year to start the season. They put him on the 65 man. I mean, they didn't put him on the 53 man. These are some guys I want to see come eat, but there's talent on this Raider team. But some of these guys now are going to have to step up quick and say, hey, I'm here and I got to eat. Definitely, especially if you're an un undrafted free agent or somebody that's brought in um, without much of a pedigree in terms of, you know, where you how you were how you were selected or, or where you came from. You have to you're almost a little bit behind the eight ball and you really have to show out. Um, but, you know, there's always room. You mentioned um with a sincere McCormick right now, the Raiders seem to have their top two running backs, but you know, is the number three job. There's going to be competition for that during the summer. Is he going to be a factor in that? Uh, Cole following him, same thing with the number three tight end, because, you know, you think they got Michael Mayer, they got Harrison Bryant. Um, is he going to be able to challenge for that third tight end role? Uh, every team keeps three, at least active on game day for the most part. Uh, and they use a third in, in in certain situations as a blocker or, or in certain formations. So I think it's like you said, making yourself indispensable uh, is the key there, whether it's on special teams or uh, in certain uh, roles on, on offense or defense, depending on, you know, what side of the ball you play on. But I think that's the key to making an impact, but you won't really know about those guys until I think really till you get into training camp, because I mean, you'll see flashes of them, during OTAs and you'll hear some things, but training camp is when you start to see where those guys come from. Um, and then when they get into preseason games, because that's who the preseason games really matter for. You know, I was asked on a national radio show last night about some guys and who you expect seeing really to emerge in OTA minicamp. I explained to them, there is no contact. Everybody looks good. And if you look bad in OTA minicamp, <laughs> you're going to look like crap and training camp. But if you look good in OTAs and minicamp, it means nothing. But once the pad comes on is when you start playing real football. And and I want to stay on that vein a little bit because I was talking to a young man who's going to be drafted by somebody. Um, today's Tuesday, right? Today's Tuesday, right? It is, yes. So Sunday, I was talking to a young man I've known for a while who's going to be drafted. And uh, he said, you know, 
any words of advice? I said, yes, jump in and take all the extra reps. Don't worry about hurting the vet's feelings. Jump in there. The guys who are the vets that have already made it, you're going to tell who the superstar is because they're going to be like, no, rookie, you're not taking my rep. But the guys that are comfortable will let you. And the guys that are fighting like you, most of them are too timid to jump in and just take reps. I, that's one thing about Jacorian Bennett, the cornerback out of Maryland last year that I really respected with the Raiders. He kept jumping in and taking reps. Trey Tucker, the wide receiver, kept jumping in and taking reps. That is one thing people don't talk about the most. When we talk about you got to eat, you got to be aggressive. You got to jump in there and take extra reps. You got to jump in there. And I remember watching Jacorian Bennett last year. He would jump in and take reps against Devontae Adams, <clears throat> where he knew I'm going against Devontae Adams, the best wide receiver in the NFL. I'm going to look stupid, and I don't care. He's going to make me better. I love that. Coaches love that. That's an important part coming up, isn't it? It is, and I think that's how you – you don't necessarily – it's a fine line because obviously you don't want to be seen as a tried hard or, or somebody who, you know, is, is uh, at the at risk of, of hurting your teammates or taking things too seriously, but you want to make sure you put yourself out there and you're not afraid of competition and you want the team to see what you can do um, because, you know, it, it, here's the thing. If you're somebody who's drafted, whether it's in the first round – um, sometimes the sixth or seventh rounders are a little bit more vulnerable. But if you're somebody that's drafted, say, in the first, like, five rounds, you're probably going to make the team as a rookie. Um, even if you're, you know, your fourth, fifth round pick, you're going to make the roster as a rookie. So you're, you're, you're safe in terms of, all right, I'm not getting cut. But how do I show that I'm capable of helping this team on game days with the reps I have? Go all out and, like you said, don't be afraid to take extra reps and don't be afraid to challenge yourself because, at the very least, your coaches will see this kid isn't afraid. He knows what, you know, what we expect of him, and he's ready to at least show that he's willing to go out there. So, I mean, it's a little different, obviously, with undrafted guys because um, you're a little lower in the totem pole, so you really have to show out with the limited reps you get. But – you know, even with that, you know, you can't be afraid to, to challenge yourself. You can't be afraid uh, to fail because you're behind the eight ball already and you're not expected to make the roster. So you might as well, you're playing with house money. You know, Thayer Mumford, first of all, the Raiders got him in the seventh round. What a steal. He's been able to hang around. He's played well. He played really well filling in for Colton Miller last year at left tackle. They wanted him to beat out Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle, but he didn't. But he brings versatility. He can play both guards, both tackles. That's a great example of a guy. A seventh round pick. And, and, and in fairness, you're hoping your seventh and your sixth and seventh round guys can make the practice squad. That's your hope to be developed. Anything above that is gravy. And the fact that they were able to get there, he stuck around, he fights and scraps. That's a guy I'm rooting for, too. That's a guy I'd love to see you know, do some things. And when he's gotten chances, he he's made the most of it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I want to ask you right now, if the draft was today and you're the Raiders at 13, four quarterbacks have gone. Bowers is out. You can't trade up or down. You got to make the pick at 13. Matt Holatic, you are the general manager. The selection is in. Who do the Raiders take? I think they go – put me on the spot because I don't know if I'm ready to name one guy yet. I think they go the best available uh, – you know what? I'm going to say they go – I'm going to say they go cornerback. I think they go cornerback. Hmm. I think that there's a good shot that they're going to trade – I mean, they're going to um, get a corner in free agency – but I don't think it would preclude them from picking a corner or you never know if they were to pick up a corner another way. Matt, in honor of, I only used each word once and it was only to describe it. Cheers. For all of you that did the drinking game. 
your boss and your spouse thanks me for keeping you sober. Hey, Matt, tell everybody where to find you on X. Sure. You can find me uh, at Matt Halatic 919, uh, M-A-T-T-H-L-A-D-I-K 919. Um, and like I said, I've already had a bunch of Raider fans jump, join on me there, join me there and, you know, start following along. I appreciate any following interaction I get. So uh, come find me. Don't forget, follow me on IG at Hondo SR, on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Hondo Carpenter. Have a great day. A lot of things happening. Good things happening around the NFL and around Raider Nation. Matt, stay on the line. I want to talk to you. We'll see you all tomorrow. Well, it would be nice if I knew how to turn this thing off. Let's try it again. See you all tomorrow. <laughs>